word of God is going to be delivered, amen, by the uh, one and only Elder Stephen J. Brown. Yeah! Yeah! Amen. That the God has seen oh, yes. we got to speak to us, the yes. Lord's people. Yes. And I encourage you to open up your heart today. Amen. Yes. As you receive what God got to say to you. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe it's a word in time, and I believe it's a word on time. Yes. Although I don't know the word yet. Uh, Amen. Oh, but I'm willing to receive the word. Yes. Amen. And so as LSC comes on this morning, amen. We all have been praying and lifting him up, and I believe that the Lord God do just what he said. Yeah. I pray, John. I pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Some of y'all are in an error 
because you don't love the scripture nor the power of God. Oh God, your traditions have kept you from being refreshed. And it was good back then. It helped you back then. But since then, you need to go hit the refresh button. There's some new bread, y'all. There's some new stuff for you. The old stuff was good when it was all old. Oh, when he gave it to you, it was new. Oh, my God. But since he gave it to you last, he gave you something new. Yo, God has given us some fresh bread, y'all. Listen, when we used to be, we was good where we was. But God has given us something new and fresh to take us into our future. I'm excited about it. Anybody excited about it? God wants you to know this. Listen, God wants you to know everything that you need to know. God does not want you ignorant about anything. And you know what? God is willing. Listen, y'all, I've met people who knew stuff, but they wouldn't tell you what they knew. They had information that can help you, but mm, they, some people are afraid you're going to do better than they are doing, so they're going to tell you what they know. But God is confident in who he is. <laughs> He'll let you know whatever you need to know because he's not intimidated by what you know. God, God don't care if you know what he knows. He wants you to know what he knows. He liberally gives you to know what he knows. He's, he told the disciples, listen, I'm going to tell you some stuff. Oh, God. That only you can know. <laughs> These parables are only for y'all. Y'all, I want you to know as saints of God, we are in the know. Yeah. We're in the know. If God has something to tell us, he's going to give it to somebody. That's why you prophets can't be afraid to tell us what God is saying. Because he's got some stuff that he wants us to know. He'll use you to tell us. If you just have an ear to hear it, what the Spirit is saying, you can pick up what He's saying. I'm learning, I gotta fine tune my frequency. I gotta tune into the frequency that God is tuned into. You know, even now, stuff is going through airwaves, through frequencies. Things are being said. Oh, you know, the enemy also operates in a frequency. Oh, and if you ain't discerning, yeah. you'll think it's God. Right, that's right. But God wants you to be in tune to what He is saying. He wants you to know what He wants you to know. Listen, if the devil had known, oh God, what God was doing, they said He wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. He didn't know. He didn't know. Y'all, the devil don't know everything you think that he knows. And where we are today, y'all, our life experiences have put us in a place of knowledge. Where you are today and how you believe today is based on the things that you've been through. But God wants to expand where you're going. So he wants you to have more knowledge. The Bible says to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. If you want to do more, be more, achieve more, I hate to tell you, you need to know more. Yes. People don't want to spend time that it takes to know something. Right. That's, right. Yeah. That's why you have to seek after knowledge. You have to ask for knowledge. You've got to knock for knowledge. Oh, You've got to knock for knowledge. But if you seek it, yes, you'll find it. Yes, if you ask, yes. if you knock, yes. see y'all, one of the problems is we don't know the scripture. Oh, y'all, can I tell you this? The, Jesus said, if you, if you follow me, you'll be my disciples indeed. Yes. And, and you shall know yes. the truth. Yes. And the truth shall 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this out there and get mad at me if you want. If you are continually bound, if you are in a situation that you can't get out of, you just need to know more truth. Right. You need to know more. You just need to know more. The Bible says if you know the truth, the truth will, the truth will make you fall. The truth will set you. The truth will come with a key and say, come on. The truth sets you free. The word of God will set you free. You're not free because you don't know enough. You just don't know enough. Yo, know, you can't be ashamed if you don't know, you don't know. But you know something? The Bible has everything in it that you need to know. You just got to knock for it. You got to seek for it. You got to ask for it. You got to search it out. You can know more, y'all. You can know more. You know what? What you know about God is not based on your education. It don't matter if you're a college graduate or you ain't a college graduate. It don't matter if you graduated from Albany High or Catholic High. If you got an AED, a GED, or a BED, it don't matter. You just got to be hungry for what God has for you. Um, one one uh, characteristic of people who are starting to pass away, they lose their appetite. You can tell when somebody about to go. When they stop eating, yeah. something was going on. Yeah, yeah. And when you see saints stop eating, oh God. Yeah. When you see saints ain't hungry for the word anymore, they pass away. When saints ain't hungry to give God praise, they're about to pass away. When they ain't hungry to pray and seek God's faith, they pass away. They dying, y'all. They don't know it. But they died because they lost their appetite. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. That God wants us to eat, y'all. He wants us to eat so much that even amongst your enemies, he said, I prepare a table. He said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yeah. 
who believe. Yes. Who us who believe. Yes. Uh, who us who believe. Yes. Believers are people that know God. Yes. The Bible says the people that know God shall be strong uh -huh. and do great right. exploit. Right. If you ain't doing stuff for God, maybe well, you don't know God. Well, come on, that's it. Hallelujah. See, uh, the knowing God is a relationship that you've established with God. Relationship means we have him. It's a two-way intimacy that takes place. I talk to you, and I allow you to talk to me. It's knowing. Some of us are. If I have a one-way relationship with my wife, then I don't really know her. That's right. Amen. If she just getting, 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 and ain't giving, that's it. All right. All right. All right. Or if I'm seeking to get, 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 and never give, yeah. that's not a knowing. No one is becoming acquainted with that thing that you, the object of what you're believing God for. Right. Becoming, uh, uh, becoming, embracing the word that you believe in God for. How many are believing God for something? My question is, do you know the word concerning the situation that you're believing God for? Have you become acquainted with that word? Has that word become acquainted with you? He said, if you abide in my word, and my word abides in you, that's a two-way relationship. Jesus, what he said, the last day, Jesus said, God, I will know you. How you don't know me? I did all this stuff for you, and you don't know me? I pray y'all that we don't, that's not my testimony, <laughs> in the last days. But there's a relationship where you know God and God knows you. God wants to, so God wants you to know what he knows. Just let me give you the scripture just so I don't get in trouble. First Corinthians, second chapter. I'll just start at verse 6. I already said a lot of this, but how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to know it. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the good. That's what I'm saying. They don't know every day. Because if they had known it, they definitely would not have crucified Christ. As it is written, eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh God. So you see verse 9, right? But look at verse 10. But, oh my God. But cancels, oh God, listen. It cancels out, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, oh God, this is it right here, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us. God has free gifts for us, y'all. Free gifts. God has a bunch of freebies. But you know something? I learned you don't, if you don't know about a freebie, sometimes you miss out on a freebie. Right. But what the Spirit does is searches the deep things of God to let you know there's a freebie over here. Oh God, there's a freebie over there. God wants you to know all the things 
It didn't say the things. Oh my God, y'all. It says the things that are freely given to us by God. God has given us a bunch of things, y'all, that we don't have to work for. All we have to do is seek for. And you know something? We don't seek for it. The Holy Spirit seeks for it. <laughs> and then he reveals to us. But it's something that we have to desire. Yes. These things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. God's got to tell us some things, y'all, that is foolishness to the world. But unto us, it's going to make total sense. The Bible, in the Message Bible says, the natural man doesn't have the capacity to receive what God is saying, y'all. And I believe God wants to increase your capacity He's, he's increasing somebody's capacity even right now. Yes. You know so? <laughs> 20 years, my stomach didn't look like what it looked now. Amen. In other words, my capacity was, was my waist size was smaller. Uh -huh. But now my capacity has a lot. Oh, God. I'm now a 30 <laughs> plus a little bit more. Yeah. My capacity has a oh, and as you hunger for more, uh, yeah. your capacity increases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. You can only receive more. I can eat more now than I can. <laughs> talking to somebody. Woo, Jesus. Yeah. My capacity has been increased, which yeah. allows me to take more in. Because I take more in, I have to release more. Oh my God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. And God wants you to release more, but you can't release more if you can't take no more in. Oh, oh my God. That's right. Woo. Yeah, God has expanded our territory. Yes, yes. I, I believe that. I believe it. I know that. Yes. Yo, know, some of you guys are not confident in what you know. Oh, come on. You don't know that you know. Oh, God. And God wants you to get to a place where you know that you know. What happens, y'all, when, when what you know is not lining up with where you are now? What happens when you know God called you to be a king, but you're still looking over sheep? Oh, Jesus, oh, Lord. My God. What happens when you supposed to have people bowing down to you when you're in a prison? What happens when you have seen your future, but where you are now doesn't line up with where God calls you to be? What do you do in those situations? You gotta trust in what you know. Yes. What you know God called you to do. Yes. What you know that God called you to be. My God. My Listen, when, when you know that God called you to be a king, then when the giant comes and confronts you, you have no problems dealing with him. Right. Jesus. Because I know I'm going to be a king, and I ain't a king yet, so that means i got to defeat this thing that's before me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know I'm not going to be in the prison all the way, so i got to... Oh God, understand that where I am is, is the process that God is taking me through. But I know that I'm, people are going to bow down for me. Yes. So I know I ain't going to be here all the way. So oh, I'm yeah. I know I'm getting out of here. Yes. I don't know yes. when, but I know I'm getting out. Yes. But while I'm in here, I'm going to serve. Oh, That's God. Right. While I'm in here, I'm still going to seek God. Yes. I'm still going to walk in what God called me to do. I'm still going to reveal dreams. I'm still going to encourage. Listen, even though I'm in the prison, I'm still going to be a leader. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm still going to take dominion wherever I am. Yes. My God. Yes. Slow it. God. You got to know who you are, y'all. No, it's a knowing. And what you know is not based. 
You can't allow your condition to, to affect what you know. Yes. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yes. You may have more month than money right now, but I know God called me to be out of debt. That's right. Yes. 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 I know I'm sick, but I know God called me to be healed. Yes. Yes. I know God called me for better, yes. even though I'm a little bitter right now. And you got to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And in knowing that, you'll be encouraged to, to, to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Yes. You can be in prison and be free. You can watch over the sheep and be free. Oh, God. Freedom is, is a, listen, freedom is here. Listen, your past life, your past experiences, what you learned from your past, they qualify you to deal with your present situation. Right. Yes. Yes. Jesus. You don't, you need to know that. In other words, what I'm dealing with, God knew it, so I must be qualified to address that thing that's addressing me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You got to know that, listen, in all my that's why when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Yes, right. That's when I can pull from the grace of God. It's a vision for me, y'all. Oh, I gotta know that. That listen, everything I've been through, as rough as it's been, or good or bad, I'm confront something now. That I've never seen before. Something that's bigger than me. But I know that everything I've been through have prepared me for this moment. Oh God! I know it's a giant, but I remember when I grabbed the beard of that lion and that snatched the sheep out of that bear's mouth. I didn't know that was preparing me for the lion. Oh my God. I didn't know everything that I was going through was preparing me for this day. And I've got to confront something that I've never confronted before. But I know that greater is he that is in me. The he that is in the world. God is getting us to a place of knowing who he is. Knowing who you are. Knowing that you are who God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. You can be who God called you to be. Y'all, you got to come to a knowing of that. You got to know that thing. It's only that knowing that's going to help you endure. Yes. It's that knowing that's going to help you to persevere. It's that knowing that's going to help you not to cast away your confidence. Oh, which has you recompense for great reward. Jesus. But after you have done the will of God. Yeah, he knows that you need patience. That's right. But after you do his will. I shall receive the promise. I'm going to receive the promise, y'all. Yes. And there's a promise waiting for you. Yes, oh God. Yeah. You just gotta know that there has to be an alignment of time. And you just wait on God. Yes. Yes. Be, he said, be still and know that I am God. Y'all, it's just a knowing that we gotta come to. You gotta know that you know. I know it. I know it. You, you got to be able to discern some things. You got to be able to listen. God is constantly unfolding some things. Yes, yes. And you got to know that He's giving you what you need for your next. Step. You don't have to know where the next step is going to take you. You just got to keep walking. You got to trust Him with all your heart. Yes. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him. He shall direct your path. Don't let your now influence what you know. Use what you know to change your now. Oh, God. My God. When you're in a situation sometimes that don't line up with what you believe God has said about you, sometimes, you know, you can't wait for God to come down. God is waiting for 
for you to engage the truth that you know. My God, my God. Y'all, we have to engage the word. What does that mean? We got to connect with what God is saying and, and put that thing to use. My God. Oh, God. How many know that when God changes, then he uses words? Yes. Come on now. Listen, God said if there's a mountain in your way, he said, I'm going to come down and move that mountain. He said, speak to the mountain. He said, who's supposed to speak to the mountain? And I'm submitting that maybe your mouth isn't moving because you ain't said a thing about it. He didn't say it's going. He said he didn't say it's going to go right away. As soon as you say so, you might have to speak and keep on speaking to it. But I know this: that mountain will move. Y'all, I had a tree in my backyard. It wasn't even in my yard actually, but uh, it it would uh. It, was, it hung over. I pick up leaves and I don't have one tree in my yard that's mine, but every year I'm picking up 10, 12, 15, 20, 25 bags of leaves. The tree, so the tree was old. My fear is that this tree is going to fall on my house one day, or it's going to fall and knock my house down. I'm, I would get out there, I said to the trees, you ain't falling on, matter of fact, I talked to him last night, I said, you ain't falling on my house. I said, you're going to fall this way, or you're going to fall over here, but you ain't going to come not my dwelling. Last year, there was a storm, y'all. That big windstorm we had, it came and blew that tree, and the tree fell unto the neighbor's house. <laughs> Knocked the back porch down and everything. No, I didn't know when the tree was going. Oh God, y'all! I didn't even know if the wind. I didn't even know if the tree would ever fall. But I told you, if you fall, you ain't falling here. No, so I'm saying you gotta speak to something, yo. It don't make sense to go out there and speak to the tree, but it makes faith. Oh God! And God is trying to make some faith in us. Listen, y'all. Your faith isn't developed unless you have to use it. I never would have gotten any stronger if I constantly went to the gym and lifted, lifted five pound dumbbells. But y'all, I would do something called pyramid. I would lift 30 pounds. Do that about 10 times. I'd be happy. Then I would put a 40 on there. I couldn't lift 40 10 times, but I would do it like eight times. I'd be happy about that. Hmm. Forty-five. Five times. Then I would grab a fifty and go, oh. <laughs> <sighs> Boom, I'm done. <laughs> but I did fifty one time, y'all. I kept doing that. Then I got to the point where I wouldn't start at 30, I would start at 35. 40, 50, and I would do 50 two or three times. Y'all, sometimes you just gotta develop your faith. It doesn't matter if you can't do 50, 50 times. If I could get 150 and I'm happy for that day. Y'all, and if you could just do one thing greater than what you've done before, oh my God. You'll develop your faith. If you can speak to an anthill, speak to every anthill that you see. Just know that God is in you and he's working through you. Know that the word of God, y'all, this word of God, y'all, it really works. This word of God works. The word of God works, y'all. The word of God, it works. God doesn't sleep or slumber and neither does his word. Oh my God, y'all. God's word is constantly at work. You know something? I don't always want to go to work. Yeah. But God's word is always ready to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always, the word of God will work 24 hours a day if you let it. Amen. Even, listen, when you're sleeping, it still works. It's just like God's word is God. If God don't sleep, his word don't sleep. Oh my God. 
If God don't slumber, his word don't slumber. Yes. Y'all, and I'm, in, I'm determined. I'm, listen, y'all are businessmen. You guys, if, put your word to work. Put the word to work in your life. Put the word to work in your life. Put the word to work in your life. Put the word to work in your circumstance. Put the word to work in your marriage. Put the word to work at work. Oh, yeah. At work, put the word to work. In your body, put the word to work. There's no place, listen, some place I just said, I'm, listen, y'all, I've read meters for like nine years. I would walk in snow up to my hips. I would walk, you know, where miles a day. I was so frustrated with meter reading. I said, if I if I ever have to go back to meter reading, I'll never I ain't, I'll leave Niagara Mohawk. I'll never read meters again. I wasn't willing to do that. I, would, I do it now. I was crazy. <laughs> what I'm saying is, y'all, there's some things y'all have said that you're not willing to do. My God. And I'm telling you, don't. Oh God, put the word to work. The word is willing to go. Oh God, the word will go someplace you won't go. The word of God, y'all, is not limited by your location. Thank you, thank you. Jesus. I'm in Albany, but I can put a word to Tennessee. Oh, yes. 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 I put the word in Tennessee. I put the word in Virginia. I put the word in North Carolina. Yes. I put the word overseas. How many of y'all put some word down in the White House? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jake. How many of y'all put some word down at City Hall? You don't even know go to the White House. How many of y'all put some word right here? Amen. Y'all have too much unemployed word. Oh, my God. Why? Because you don't know the word. You don't know the power of God. You don't know the scripture. You don't know the power of God. And so we err. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll get word from God on a need to know basis, but God wants to expose to you what he knows. Paul had some word that the prophets before him never received. <laughs> And there's some things God wants to tell you that maybe he hasn't revealed to anybody else. Yes! Paul said, listen, I know they had some good word, but he told me about the Gentiles being able to come into this kingdom. God wants us to know so much that he's given us stuff that the angels, oh my God. The angels look to us for revelation of who God is. You know how that's powerful to me. Yes. Oh, God. Yo, God wants us to know some stuff about him. God wants us to know some stuff. He wants you to know who you are. Yes. You've been seated where? Yeah. Yeah. Where? In Christ, In Christ Jesus. Our seats are far above. Yes. My God. The devils, the principalities, the powers. How many know that God wants to manifest his kingdom in the earth? Did you know yes, that? Oh, just God. You know something? I believe God is excited about us. Thank you, we should be excited about him. Yeah. And what he's doing in our lives, you know. And I just believe that God wants you to know some stuff. And he wants you to seek after him even more. And hunger and thirst for him. And know that God is doing something great in your life. How many people know that? Yes. And if you don't know that, ask God to reveal to you what he's doing in your life. Ask him to do something in your life. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Yes. And you have to make a commitment to God. You may even have to make the commitment to yourself. Yes. You got to determine that, listen, I want to be better. Yes. I want to do better. Yes. I want to be holy. Yes. God, I don't like where I am. I don't like what 
I just said. I don't like what I've been thinking. I don't like what I've been saying. I don't like where I've been going. I don't like how I've been feeling. You gotta confess your faults. Jesus. Why? That you might be healed. Oh my God. And there's some things that some prerequisites to what God does in your life. You have to do something. That's right. God just wants you to know more, I believe. Be refreshed in what He's doing today, y'all. To know is just to perceive, to understand, to have some revelation, is to have an intimate relationship with, with what God is doing in your life, what God is saying to you, what God is speaking. Yo, how many know God is speaking? Yes, yes. yes, all the time. God is speaking. Yes. How many know God wants you to know what He's doing? Yes. He's not keeping it. He ain't keeping it a secret. He's revealing it. You just got to be one to know. I'm going to stop. But you know, I just think there's a, there's a knowing that's available to you today. That you don't have to be content. Matter of fact, don't be content with where you are. I'm learning now there's more. You never, you ain't reached, I haven't reached it. I haven't, I'm not perfected yet. Oh God. But I'm being perfected. And my perfection is based on, I'm, I'm learning more about God. I'm learning more about me. I'm learning more about what God is doing. What do you say? In the last day, knowledge is going to increase. This earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. God just wants us to have so much more than what we have. I, I really believe that. God wants me to do more than what I'm doing right now. And our failure to do is based on our failure to know. I don't know that God wants me to be better. I don't believe it. I believe that I'm supposed to be Oh, nobody knows the troubles I see. Nobody knows my sorrow. That's not what God's got for you. God's got joy unspeakable, full of glory for you. God's got life for you, life more abundant. God's got the best for you. Yes. He's got the best for you. Yes. You just have to go and receive it. Go seek after it. Go knock for it. I'm going to stop it. Y'all know that old song, I see her face everywhere I go. Yes. Yes. Have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? Have you seen my, oh God, y'all. You gotta see your victory. Have you seen my victory? Have you seen my victory? Oh, have you seen my deliverance? Have you seen her? Have you looked for her? Do you recognize, oh God. Y'all, you gotta be able to recognize your, your blessing when he's looking you in the face. Ask for God for discernment. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. Ask God for understanding. Just ask Him for everything that you need to be who He called you to be. Look for it. You'll find it. I, I, the Bible says if you seek for it, you'll find it. If you ask for it, you'll receive it. If you knock for it, the door will be open. You know, some of y'all just one knock. Have you ever knocked and then because you didn't get the answer, you just left right away? But I used to read meters when I didn't want to go in somebody's house, I'd do a phantom knock. <laughs> Ain't nobody home. <laughs> we used to call it the phantom knock. 
Some of y'all are phantom knocking. You act like you're knocking. But you're not engaged in the woods. You gotta make contact with that but you're knocking. That's for somebody right there. Try to engage somebody. Our asking is an engagement. God wants you to engage the truth of His Word. But I believe God wants us to know some things, and He wants you to be confident in what you know, and He wants you to know that you can know. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise, y'all.